Hello. Today I want to recap with you how King John dealt with his people uh, in his kingdom. This will be a good measure to work out if he was a good king or not. Uh, this will therefore be a quite important lesson for us as we prepare for our upcoming assessment. Hooray! So let's find out some stuff. Now you might remember from last lesson that King John had some rebels in France. They thought that his nephew Arthur of Brittany should be the next king. And so they rebelled. John went to France, captured them and marched them through the streets to humiliate them. And people would throw vegetables and stuff at him. But that's not all. These rebels were nobles. And usually captured nobles are kept in nice castles and are treated well until their families pay for their release. John was having none of that. He flung them into the dark dungeons and refused to feed them. Of these rebels, 22 of them starved to death. Wowzers. But what happened to Arthur of Brittany, his rival to his throne? Well, we don't know for certain. We know that John put him in prison, but he was never heard from again. What we do have is an account that was written by a monk. Um, let's see what that says. In fact, let's go, let's go full screen. King John had captured Arthur and kept him alive in prison for some time. After dinner on the Thursday before Easter, when John was drunk and possessed by the devil, he slew him with his own hand and tying a heavy stone to the body, cast it into the river. Now, when it says possessed by the devil, it doesn't literally mean that the devil came into John's body. I think the monk is pointing out that John was committing acts of evil. And by slew, the monk means kill. Why did he tie a stone to Arthur's body before casting him into the river? I assume it's to hide the evidence. Hmm. What else? Well, how did he treat his friends? That's a really good uh, way to judge someone, I think. Well, if you remember from last lesson, it's not always well. There's this chap called, <laughs> bear with me, William de Briouze. Briouze. Briouche. William, who was very loyal supporter of John. Indeed, he was the man who caught Arthur for him. And yet the two men fell out over money. Fearing for his life, William fled England. However, John still wanted revenge and so, and so turned to William's wife and son. He sent them both to prison and refused to feed them. They died a slow and painful death by starvation. Hmm, seems to be a favourite method of John. Ah, this guy. Lastly, how did John deal with the people of the church? Well, as you'll remember, John had a big falling out with this guy, that guy, uh, Pope Innocent III, who should be, over who should be the next Archbishop of Canterbury. Now, in response to this falling out, the Pope made the decision to close down all the churches in England. So John wants revenge. So let's have a look at what went down. So this is an account, the first one is an account uh, written by a monk, and it says, The king ordered the few monks who remained at Canterbury, the blind and the crippled, to be thrown out, and the monks to be regarded as public enemies. Ooh. And the second source is written by a monk called Roger of Wendover, and it states, The servants of a certain sheriff somewhere in Wales brought to the royal court a robber. He had robbed and murdered a priest. John said, he has killed an enemy of mine. Let him go. Hmm. Hmm. So when John did eventually die in 1216, there were rumours that it was done by monks as revenge for the way he treated the people in his church. In fact, here's a picture that kind of shows it. The gossip suggests that a monk poisoned the king whilst he rested at the monastery. Now, that story isn't actually true. It's false. But it does show how badly John treated the monks that people actually believed it. And they assumed there must be some truth in it because he just didn't like the monks. OK, so that's how John dealt with his people. Uh, remember, be filling in that table as you uh, watch this video.